Hey everybody, welcome back to Faraday Research. Uh, this is going to be part one of two. And uh, the first demonstration, I'm going to show um, an AC configuration. So I've done some major changes. Um, if you tuned into uh, Bernie's uh, podcast last night, I showed the whole system. I've done some more refining and found out some more interesting data. So um, first of all, what I'm going to do is to start off. So I got the high, high voltage uh, generator right here. It's going into my uh, block there where I have two high voltage capacitors or 15 kVA each. Then I'm going to the single spark gap this time. All right, now I got that small coil. Now I'm starting to realize that this coil is becoming way more important than I realized in the beginning. So I'm still using the small one. I'm gonna be printing off my new Tesla coil hopefully in the next couple of weeks and I uh, have to do some repairs to my uh, 3D printer because we moved and uh, it got beat up a little bit. So I have to do some uh, minor repairs to it. As soon as I get that done, then I can print off my new uh, Tesla coil. So I took the original Tesla coil. If you remember, I had this gauge wire here. The, this one's a 36 gauge wire and that goes right across. And then after that, now I've been watching a lot of videos lately about jewel ringers. Now, jewel ringers have basically kind of uh, give me the realization of this is how you're supposed to extract the power off a Tesla coil. So basically, this is a Tesla coil modified with speaker wire on top of it. I believe this is 20 gauge speaker wire. I believe it's 20 gauge. So I wrap the entire distance of the coil again on top of it. So they're insulated, so they're not, there's a dielectric in between the two. So now the power is going to transfer from the 36 gauge wire to the 20 gauge wire that's on top here that you can see. So this very much works like a jewel, uh, a jewel ringer in many ways. And I just kind of realized that now that this configuration I'm showing you, it's an AC setup. So it's going to show you um, how efficient uh, I can light up light bulbs with this. Now, also, the spark gap is very, very important. You have to toy around with it. It's not like a MOSFET where you can adjust uh, um, how many hertz you're going to get. With this thing, you have to do it kind of manually and kind of go by your instinct. You'll see how the light's going to react as you adjust the distance um, with the spark gap. Right now, mine's set at about two millimeters apart. I don't know if you can see that very well, but yeah, it's about two millimeters. So from, from the high voltage, it goes into 36 gauge wire, energizes it, transfers all the power to the 20 gauge speaker wire on top, comes down and goes to two leads. Now, one of them, I got a neon bulb there just to make sure I'm getting high voltage. This will only light up if I have high voltage coming out. So that's an indicator just to let me know I got high voltage coming out. So from those two wires coming out, because it's an alternating current, I don't have to rectify it. So I bring it right over and I attach it to my light. Now this light here is 8.5 watts, okay? So I ran the, the test and I, I uh, plugged all the data into the efficiency calculator. And this one's showing me right now, as I got it configured right now, it's 188% over unity or efficiency. So it's 188%. So I'm going to turn it on here and I'm going to put it at about 6,000 volts, give or take. All right. So as you can see, it's lit up. It's blinking because if I put more voltage to duties or the uh, the frequency is going to go higher and it'll become more steady so let's put it up to about eight now that's pretty steady light now this is 8.5 watts it's really bright as you can tell on the camera it kind of looks like it's kind of fluttering a bit but that's because just a refresh rate of the screen but for me it's really bright like it's fully lit up so this is a very good prime example of having, there's the neon, so you can see the neon's glowing, so I do have high voltage coming out. There's a spark gap. Now it's flickering actually a lot more on the camera than it is looking at it here. It's 
it's more of a steadier stream. But you can see I'm really lighting up light bulbs like fantastic. Now just for just for kicks and giggles, I'm gonna shut it off. I'm gonna power down here so I don't shock myself. All right, I'm gonna put an 11 watt bulb. This is a CFL bulb. Now this one here is kind of pushing it. It can't really do it. But if I make a new coil, there should be no reason why I can't light up this 11 watt bulb. Now this is AC, okay? It's not rectified. It's running basically raw right out of the, the te modified Tesla coil, or you can call it a jewel ringer, because that's pretty much what it is. So let's turn this on. I'm gonna put nine volts going in. All right, now you can see the CFL bulbs lighting up. It's, it's flickering a lot because it just doesn't have the horsepower I need. So if I were to get a larger Tesla coil, wrap it with even more windings on it. Now this is also cordless. It's an air coil. All right. It's an air core. There's no core in this. So I'm lighting up 11 watts and I'm using about um, probably about 7 watts. Give or take 7 watts. So 7 watts and I'm getting lighting up 11 watts. So, but anyways, the 8.5 watts works a lot better than this. It's more steady, it's more consistent, and it, it's something that you could actually use. So, it, it, it's not taking that much power, but I'm finding the DC, which is going to be part, part two, is actually more efficient, believe it or not. It's actually way more efficient, because... It's going back to the same old scenario I've been saying all along. Any over unity system has to have capacitance. If you don't have capacitance in the system, you can't get that high values. Now I did some tests with my um, DC setup yesterday and it was showing me my, my uh, efficiency was at 288% or sorry, 255. It was at 255% over unity which is really cool. So in the next video, part two, I'm gonna hook everything up. I'm gonna be charging these up and light a light bulb. Now I've been toying around with, um, with cores, with transformers, and I made this one. I inverted it this way because I wanted to get the two cores closer together. So I have, uh, the, this one's a 22 gauge wire, 50 turns. And the secondary coil is the same gauge, and it is 100 turns. So I got 50 and 100. Now, I could actually go even higher with this. I could go to maybe, say, 200 turns and see what would happen. It, it, it's a balancing act. From what I was reading up, you try to go a 50, 50, to, uh, 50 to 1 ratio or a 2 to 1 ratio, however you want to look at it. So this one's like 50-50. So 50 turns, 100 turns. So yeah, um, I'll, I'll hook it up in the next video. Um, even uh, charging up um, capacitors without the transformer seems to be, you know, very efficient. Um, and it, it charges up very fast. And I'll use like a light bulb and then you can see the capacitance. I'll shut it off and you'll see the light will still actually be lit. It'll be actually running off the DC power source as a load. And actually with this bulb here, it lasts almost five minutes. So yeah, I'll show that in the next video. But uh, yeah, for now, I'm making some headway here. I'm actually achieving what I want to do. So for the generator system that I'm going to be building, I could either hook it up as an AC output or a DC output, depending on what I'm going to be doing. So if I charge a DC output, then I can charge batteries and I can um, run an inverter and then power the house with it. So, yeah, it's uh, I'm surprised this 8.5 watts really lit up. Look, look how bright it is. 
So yeah, uh, leave your uh, questions and comments at the bottom. Don't forget bottom corner, subscribe. Also in the description, I have my Patreon page as well as I have my Bitcoin wallet. So if you want to donate through Bitcoin, now you can do it. Now the link is there. So anyways, that's it for now. And we'll see everybody soon in part two.